What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. This is Real Deal Commentary and yes, I am back with another live video. In today's video, we have a powerful conversation between two black men by the names of King J. Barnett and Christian Keys. They sit down and discuss their traumatic upbringings, the work they put in to overcome the trauma, and much more. Let's take a look. Like, hey man, you gotta, I need, you need to pray for everybody that has ever screwed you over, ever messed you over, ever broken you, ever, well clearly they didn't break you, but you thought they broke you. You yeah. need to pray for them. And I was like, I don't want to. You need to pray for them. You want to learn how to set all this down. You got to pray for those folks that wronged you. You have to accept that apology that you never got. Mm, that's and that good. you probably will never get. And so, I want to ask you. Yeah, talk on that a little more because some people have a, a huge issue, Chris Christian, um, with not being able to accept that the freedom that they need may not come from the person that need that 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 would apologize for the action or the wrongdoing or for the abuse or for the behavior that they carried out. Talk about how important that is because you may or may not get that apology. Yeah, no, you absolutely, and chances are, half the time, you're not. You're not, because you never know what they went through. So, like, I was still, you know, still pissed off at my, you know, my birth father. You know, I swore him off a long time ago. God is a genius and a comedian. So he was like, a couple Sundays back, uh, his niece called, uh, hit me on, hit me in my DM, like, hey, I think my father is your father's brother. I think my father is your uncle, and I think my uncle is your dad, your birth father. Wow. And I was like, uh, what's his name? She told me, and I was like, really? Is this what we're going to do? And I got the number and, and called him and talked to him, and I knew as soon as he said hello. And I haven't, I saw him once or twice, you know, maybe two, three times for about half an hour apiece when I was a kid, but he left when I was three and a half. But I, the opportunity, I had already forgiven him. So it just made me that much more light and free. And I, and I was like, hey, man, you know, I said, I used to resent you and hate you. I said, but I forgave you a long time ago. So, you know, let's stay in touch. You know, he was like, how'd you get to that place to where you would just set stuff down? He asked me the same thing you did. And I was like, I said, I needed to. It was out of necessity. He was like, I, I have stuff that I want to do in my life. I have passions. I create them. And, and, and it's like how exercise keeps your cardiovascular system, your blood system flowing clearly. If you're not active, you know, it gets clogged. The holding on to those, those grudges and those that angst and that resentment and they owe me this, the world owes me this because I had a hard time. That's that's cholesterol in our flow and in my creative flow. And I was like, I can't I can't do the things God put, put you know, the visions I get if I keep being angry and resent these people. So I, I told him what I did. I literally one day I laid down in the middle of my floor like like three or four apartments ago, my first apartment when I first got here. And I cried for about an hour or two like a baby. And and I prayed for Mrs. Keys, who beat the hell out of us for six years with everything you can imagine. Bat, hammer, axe handle, broomstick, saucepan, bottle. When we got too big for the belt and the belt didn't hurt us no more, she beat us with the belt buckle. She held the leather side and beat us with the belt buckle. Man. Um, stand outside naked in the snow scalding hot showers, freezing cold showers, and she was standing at the back and spanked us back underneath the water when we backed out of it. She was she was broken like that. But I had to forgive her so I could again keep going where where God wants me to go. So and I never got that apology. She passed away. I tried to look her up to tell her I forgave her. I wasn't sad when I found out she passed because I had already forgiven her. We right. have to accept those apologies that we're never going to get. And 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 accept the ones that we do get. They may not be perfect apologies, but we that's part of the process of, of healing. Man, dude, that man, bro, I, first of all, I want to say to you that I commend you for sharing in such details and such uh, depth about your story, uh, uh, about your process, and about your journey. And for those that are watching, because I always, man, because, you know, and what people don't realize, man, there's a level that we have to get to to be able to share that without mm -hmm. holding back and yeah. be able to release that. And there's a level of transparency that allows you to be vulnerable with that information because the same as you, right? With my dad, I watch this man preach every Sunday. I watch him 
get out of the pulpit. One, one of the memories that I have often, and my sister and I talk about it, is that one Sunday, man, we, 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 we were ready to go. We we're hanging out in the sanctuary and my mom and dad are in the office. And so all of a sudden we hear all this rumbling, right? Rumbling in the room. And so we go in there like, what's going on? And so they open the door, they open the door. My father has my mom in a chokehold and the deacons have to pull him off of her. And man, it took so much in me as a kid because I'm a kid, I couldn't do anything. Yeah. And so fast forward to, I never forget God said to me that I cannot release what I put into you until you release what your dad did to you. Yep. So again, he said, I cannot release what I put into you until you release what your dad did to you. Because yeah. it's smothering it and covering it. And, exactly. And, yeah. Because who we are is already in us. Yeah. So when you think about a forest, right, uh, there's a forest inside of every seed and every mm -hmm. tree that is planted. Mm -hmm. and, I like so, that. and so being able to really acknowledge that God said, listen, you cannot carry this around because, man, it was taking over every area of my life, my relationships. It was taking over how I played the game because I played football angry. Everything mm -hmm. was angry. Mm -hmm. And I never forget this guy saying to me, he says, Jay, the world don't owe you anything, dude. And it wasn't so much that the world owed me. It was that I want an apology yeah. from this guy. Because in my mind, you you effed me up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so I just think that's powerful that we've had these powerful transformations yeah. right in our lives to forgive the men in our lives. Because the one thing that we, you know, that I even say to clients Focusing on not becoming what your parents did or the person who hurt you did will only push you toward becoming them. Yeah. Because that energy is so focused on trying not so hard. Because, you know, we I, I know I was trying so hard not to be my dad and not focusing on my own healing and on 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 uh, and development. I became him yeah. in my actions. And so which leads me, man, how important is it, Christian, for black man to heal oh man it's it's way way i was thinking about that earlier because i was like what are we gonna because i i remember our conversation last time we chopped it up and i was like he i said he gonna come in gunning he gonna come in and had a heavy duty questions plus <laughs> you got a therapy background and i and i do too i literally had you know a thousand hours of therapy um wow. yeah i was in foster care for 14 years yeah i was in foster care for 14 years so you had to go, if you were doing pretty good, you only had to go once a week. If you were kind of troubled, which I was, you know, because um, I was always in a different foster home because I was hateful. I was angry. I was, you know, I was, I called myself out loud, empowered the phrase damaged goods. I, I spoke that over me. And so I had a lot of undoing to do, but um, all that, uh, you know, and that's just a foster care. When I was in certain boys homes, we had group meeting every day five days a week and then you still had your individual session so that like even boysville when i was in boysville for 18 months i probably had 450 hours of therapy just there alone wow so it was it was you like yeah i resented most of it but then eventually like i you know something would catch my ear and be like oh that's kind of how i feel sometimes and then you know hearing other people talk about how things affected them it 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 it, it, you know how at, at the uh, fancy restaurant sometimes the table will spin, like the chef will spin your, your, your stuff around to you. It started to spin around, and I was like, I need to talk about some of this. Like, it started to shift for me. And um, I, I think the importance of, of us as black men with healing is how can I possibly lead a home and lead a family if, if I'm still partially or mostly toxic? I, how, I can't possibly properly leave my home and be the man that my future wife is going to need me to be and, and, and be the father that my current son needs me to be and, you know, my future kids are going to need me to be. I can't do it unless I set down this stuff that has been plaguing me and haunting me and torturing me and that I've been allowing that stuff to do. I need to turn and face that and have that fight, have that battle. And it's not a switch that clicks on, you know it, but not everybody does. 
forgiveness is an everyday process. Forgi process. Forgiveness is 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 the biggest part of it is what's about half and half, but, the, but now about 60, 40, 70, 30, making the decision to forgive them daily for the rest of your life because it's going to pop up every day or every other day or once a week or something's going to trigger it. And I remind myself, like, hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we buried that. That's got dirt and grass on top of it and headstone. We processed that. I've forgiven that. We're not digging that back up. If right. I look back at it, it's for a lesson. And that's right, it. Right, exactly. So it's very important for us to heal as black men because, and, and we're coming up, it wasn't okay even to have these conversations. It was, it was, yeah. it wasn't masking. It wasn't, you ain't, you ain't, you know, you ain't repping. You ain't, you know, I, I didn't realize until I was probably 35, no, 40, that I was an empath. So that opened up and explained so much more for me because like, I feel everything. Like everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. So it's certain stories I can't hear in public because somebody's going to be cutting onions. It's just the way that I'm built. Um, I, other stories enrage me, and I have to control that. Like, hey, 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 hey. Okay. I, I'm a full-fledged empath. I feel every single thing. But what I had to learn was, again, with accountability, experience it but don't absorb it there it is there it is yeah there it is man it's nothing wrong it's a superpower so i learned yes, like, okay i can oh and, and i'm an actor so i got an outlet for it exactly but experiences nothing wrong with experiencing it feel all of it every exactly. single bit of it exactly. let it all on your shirt yeah you set it down because you can't absorb that and take that on as your own pain e exactly man Woo. Dude, you, you, man, you, you all in my mix, bro, because in a session today, I, I suggested that because what the healing process allows you to do, right? Because most of the time, as you know, and even with the kids, like I started out with a program, emotional recovery program for kids in foster care. I did that about five years and it was group therapy. And one of the things is, is helping people to understand how to sit in the process Mm -hmm. but not allow the process to overwhelm you to where you take it on as your own. Yeah. To where I want you to feel the feeling of the molestation, feel the feeling of the abuse, feel the feeling of the abandonment. But then again, you are able to control how it moves and navigates through you to where it doesn't alter your behavior and alter how you see yourself. Because the biggest challenge for most of us especially for most of us who experience childhood trauma. Yeah. Because most of our issues as adults started when we were kids. And what happened for most of us as, as, as African-American black people, we didn't have a space to process. Yeah. Because you couldn't process, especially in my household, because if you, if you ask somebody, okay, why, then you were hit in the mouth you were reprimanded because kids were seen and not heard. So what that did was it taught many of us how not to talk and to communicate. Yeah. But then we find it difficult as adults. You're in a relationship. Hey, talk to me. What's wrong? We don't know how to talk. Yeah. Because when there were times when you wanted to ask a question, you were put on hush. Yeah. So what happened is cognitively we've learned how to function from a dysfunction uh, from a dysfunctional place right and when you look at abuse right whether it was physical whether it was emotional sexual whether you had neglect it was physical neglect or emotional neglect or then for many of us for me my issue started from the divorce and the dysfunction because a lot of us have a lot of household dysfunction right where you had either somebody in your family who had mental illness and they didn't give it a name they just said oh that boy crazy yeah you know, or you had, you know, the relationship between our parents were dysfunctional or, you know, you had substance abuse. You had a parent that was on alcohol or you had a parent incarcerated. All of these adverse childhood experiences mm -hmm. where people don't realize they determine not who we become as adults, but it determines how we function 
as adults. Yeah. And so as you were talking about being a total, you know, uh, uh, impact to where you feel everything, because during your process in your childhood, you felt the yeah. abuse, yeah. the abandonment, the neglect, and you felt all of that, right? And so as you have grown, you have this superpower to where you have the ability of the the ability to feel, but it's learning how to manage that. Yeah. And and that's the challenging part. Yeah. Because my mother was a was an evangelist mm -hmm. and she was a seer. So I was a very clairvoyant kid. I would have vision, they would come to pass. So I was a very prophetic I had a prophetic gift. Yeah. And not knowing what that was. And so in that space, man, there's times I can feel people's hurt. And what's really crazy is even in my work as a therapist, because I feel like counseling and therapy is really so, it's so connected to the spirit realm. Yeah. Because most of the things that we're really tied to really have a spiritual connection yeah. and spiritual bondage that is attached to something generational is where we get the generational curse thing yeah. from. And that whole process, man, like, talk about that, man, because I, I, I want people to understand, man, like, healing is a journey. Yeah. I have this quote, healing is the journey and wholeness is the destination. Yeah.